Hello everybody, thank you for watching. My name is David, I'm a life coach, and I help people heal and recover and grow from all kinds of trauma. And today, I made a video about uh, a subject that I get asked uh, about quite frequently. I do a weekly Q&A, and I got a, a question this week about how to be the best parent, if I have any tips. And I am not a parent. I don't have children, so I haven't done this. But I've learned an incredible, incredible amount of knowledge on how to be a pretty good parent, how to have good relationships and stuff like this. And I, I coach parents on how to be better parents, and I even coach their children too. So I have a lot of experience with this over the years. And I wanted, now, what I'm going to share here, I promise you I didn't get anywhere else. And I might be repeating somebody else's work, but this is just what I've come up with. I, I really don't like to... Um, see what other people's opinions are too much and try to f form my own. And so this is stuff that I've accumulated over the years of helping other people and stuff I've learned and read and, and just seen my, myself. So first thing I want to say on how to be the best parent, and that's to start by being the best version of yourself. Okay. And so uh, a lot of people use this analogy and I think it's a good one. When you're on an airplane and you know, the oxygen mask comes down and the, and the steward, or uh, what do we call them now? Uh, flight attendant uh, tells you to put a mask on your child, or I'm sorry, tells you to put your mask on you first and then your child. And that's how I think of life. I mean, we have to take care of ourselves first. We have to love ourselves first. We have to meet our needs first and, and pay attention to our emotions and how we feel is always comes first uh, to, uh, than over or before other people's feelings, okay? So, we need to be emotionally stable and independent. And we need to learn what our voids were, if we have any in our childhood, and learn how to fill these voids. And we need to have a strong sense of self of who we are by knowing what we value and express it. So emotionally stable and independent, fill our own voids, is what I'm trying to say. That's, a, that's the first one, actually. And strong sense of self of who we are by knowing what we value and expressing it, okay? Next one is raise your child with love. Your child at some point in your relationship needs to understand and know and feel what unconditional love is. That they get love no matter what they do. And you raise them with love even when you punish them. Okay? We have to meet our children's emotional needs. That's how we teach our child to do it themselves, which is the most important thing in our lives. Children will already know basics of physical needs. So it's amazing how much how much we focus on a child's physical needs and, and, and monetary needs, financial, you know. I, I, it's just so common that a child will have the best clothes, better clothes than any, any other child, will go to the best school in the state, will have, will go to the best, biggest church and have the biggest, nicest car, bedroom and toys and eat the best food and all this and just massive emotional neglect and not have one single need met. Meet the child's emotional needs. Show and teach them the value of moral principle. So we go back to you expressing you, what you value, and that rubs off onto the child. Okay? Honesty, very important. We don't allow them to lie, and we don't lie to them. Okay? We teach them equality and that it's, that it's good to make mistakes. Crazy, huh? Concept. And we encourage children to try. They don't have any confidence. All we can do is hand them some courage. We encourage them to try and fail and try again. For children who've been in abusive, traumatic households, experiencing grief, things like this, I want it to be clear that we don't overcompensate for the other parent, because that happens so much, right? Abusive trauma uh, relationships or grief by losing a parent, and one parent is gone, out of the picture. We do not overcompensate. Let me make it clear that a mother's role is to keep the child safe and protect them. The father's role is to just be involved and show direction. Those are the things we can overcompensate for, only. Okay, so if you're a mother, you keep your children safe and you are involved in their life and show them direction. Do you understand? I hope that makes sense. And if you're a father, you're, you're going to already 
be involved in their life and show them direction. If there's no mother, you make sure they're safe and protected. You kind of do that anyways. See, I believe it's the only time we overcompensate or compensate for the loss of the other parent. We are always respectful to the other parent. Extremely important. We don't sit there and say, you know, your dad or mom are bad people, bad parents, they're crazy, they're stupid, they're ugly. We can point out behaviors, but what you want to do is help your children emotionally navigate with the other parent. You can help them do that very carefully and very respectfully. And if there's another, if, if you're a mother and there's no father, right, or they have a bad toxic father, think about a male role model. Have your child around other men that are healthy. Same vice versa. Okay, there's no mother, or if you're a father and you're raising children and the mother's not present or the mother is sick and toxic and unhealthy, you make sure that they are exposed to other healthy women as a role model, okay? Very, very important, and, it, and that doesn't happen a lot. And we teach our children responsibility and accountability. They've got to understand that their behaviors have have results, right? There's the things that they do and affects other people and what's right and wrong, teach them values, right? And you, you punish them and we punish them with love. You don't have to be mean. You don't have to yell and scream. We stay in control. The more out of control you are in front of your children, the more your children will not trust you, okay? So I talk about meeting emotional needs. Let me just go through these. I'm not going to read emotional needs. I'm going to tell you some ways to meet your children's emotional needs. Okay? Emotional needs are the most important thing to human beings, period. And we don't know how to meet them at all. Our parents are teachers, and they meet our emotional needs in our childhood so that we hopefully take over in adulthood. We usually focus on meeting about 10 emotional needs. So I have 10 different examples. One, always reassure your child to ensure emotional security. Always let them know that you have their back no matter what. No conditions ever. Doesn't matter what they do, only how they feel. If they do something wrong, you show them how it feels bad because when children do things that are wrong, they feel bad. Focus on how child feels, not does. We don't judge children and focus on their behaviors and what they did do and what they didn't do. We ask them how they felt about it. We ask them how they feel. Okay? We ask them how little Johnny made them feel when they hit them or hurt them or said this or said that or the teacher did this or did that to them. We, we let them understand how they feel and we listen and we ask. Okay? Support your child's autonomy their autonomous self, their feelings, fears, opinions, wants, needs, their self needs to be expressed. Do not tell them your fears, needs, wants, theirs. Find out what they are. And how do you do that? By connecting. Connect with the child by talking. Emotional language. Respect their opinion. Listen, don't judge, and explain everything to them. Privacy. Respect it. Your child must have privacy, and I can't even explain more how much I see this being violated and neglected in children. Going through their wallet, forcing them to wear this and wear that and wear your hair this way, and let me see your phone and tell me what you did all day and tell me what you're thinking right now and what did you do with that person. You, there's got to be some autonomy and some privacy. Respect their belongings, their thoughts, and their relationships, their friendships. Respect them. Don't judge their friends and got to know every little thing that's going on. Just ask them how they feel. That's it. Encourage friendship and intimacy. Intimacy isn't just sex. Okay? Men need intimacy with other men. You, your children need intimacy with their peers and let them have it. Participate. Help them participate in wider larger communities, okay? So sports, activities, hobbies, organizations, things like you know, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, all those things. Let them feel like they're a part of something and help them understand their role and the importance of their attendance, 
okay? Let them understand that, you know, the team needs you. This is why the team needs you. They're counting on you. And without you, they may not win the game and they need to win the game, you know? Explain these things, okay? Encourage to try. No judge, no judgment, and mistakes are good. <laughs> Weird, huh? Because all my clients have been told that mistakes are bad. No. I made a huge mistake dating a sociopath for 10 years. So, should I have not made that mistake? If I didn't make that mistake, I wouldn't know what I know now. I wouldn't be who I am today, and I wouldn't be here helping any of you. So, is that a bad thing that I shouldn't do? Should I be ashamed of it? No. And we don't judge other people. We allow other people to make mistakes too. Help your child. This is the last one. Help your child somehow, in some way, find meaning and purpose in their life rather than just the mundane chores or school. Meaning and purpose in life, okay? Just some tidbits, some suggestions, some advice on how to be a better parent so that your children are better people. Parents, you all have the responsibility. You don't have long, too. And let me make this real clear, okay? You only have a few years to prepare your child after birth. Literally, you only have a few years before they enter society. And guess what happens when that child enters society? Their peers start becoming more important than you. And they've got to learn how to socialize and communicate to get what they want and need. That's what boundaries are. And we help children form their boundaries. We don't form them for them. We don't tell them what's okay. We ask them what's okay. I'm serious. We don't tell them what religion they want they are. We ask them what they feel. Think about it. Okay? We help our children prepare them. We don't sabotage them. You know? So, you know, I, I don't think there should be any bad words. I think it's crazy. Communication is so important to sit there and go, yeah, but there's these words we're not allowed to say. It's insane. It helps you f express yourself. We should be able to say bad words. But if I had children, would I teach them to say bad words? No. They've got to be able to assimilate in society and get what they want and need. And if, you, if they're going into kindergarten saying the F word, good luck in life. You know. I hope that this helps, Whitney. I hope. Um, I, I recommended a book. And it seems like a really good book. It's, uh, it's called Raising an Emotionally Intelligent Child, The Heart of Parenting by John Goffman. It's on audiobookstore.com. I put a link in my Q&A from yesterday, Monday, in part one. There's a link to that on Amazon if you guys are interested on being a better parent, being better versions of yourself and helping your children do the same. But I want all parents to know that this is a learning process, okay? So no guilt, man. No guilt. It, 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 what, one thing I've learned is there's, you know, normal, you know, every family's got their problems. It's the families that try to show like they don't have any are really the ones that are really messed up, okay? So we accept faults and we accept mistakes and we just do better now if we don't like it, Okay. And you, you, I know that your children are getting grown, but it's never too late to be emotionally responsible for you or for them, okay? Thank you, all of you guys. Please love yourself first. I'll see you again. Ask me questions, right? <clears throat> if you think that this helped you and could help somebody else, will you please post it somewhere, uh, uh, send it to people, put it on your social media accounts, maybe put it in a playlist. And anybody that wants to get coaching by me, you can find me at daviddemars.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.